Okay, so this morning I want to have a look at will your anchor hold and how to make sure it does. So we're living uh, in unprecedented times. How many times have you heard that uh, said this year? Seems to sort of yeah, seems to sort of be the, the go-to on TV um, that we've heard. So I guess 2020 has been a bit of a crazy year though, and uh, as it draws to a close, we're now uh, nearly in December. We we tend to look back and we we tend to reflect on the year that was. Uh, certainly on on New Year's Eve, we often uh, review the year, uh, focusing in I guess on the on the major th- uh, things that have occurred, and uh, did we. Did what we plan for in 2020, did that occur? Did that happen? And as we reflect, we also tend to forecast ahead. So we look to 2021. What's 2021 going to bring? What is it going to bring? Do any of us actually know? And we can have our plans, right? And often we do. um, But we need to remember that those plans, they might not be what God has planned for us. The whole lockdown thing, the whole COVID thing, COVID-19, this is something that most of us wouldn't have thought was going to happen, right? That would be restricted and confined to our own homes. We're we're unable to leave, we're unable to see family. People were leaving things in letterboxes, but we're unable to actually see family for birthdays, celebrations. We're unable to go to work. That part wasn't too bad for for some of us. If you have your own business, it wasn't ideal. Depends what side of the coin you're on with that one. Um, but we, you know, we're unable to go to the general shops, we couldn't buy the things that we might want, um, we could still get the things we needed, but we couldn't buy the things we want, and we're unable to go to church. It's the first time in my life that we've been told we couldn't go to church. And probably, I imagine for most people here, the first time as well. I guess it's a reminder that none of us know what's around the corner, right? None of us know what's going to happen in 2021. And with that in mind, I want us to look at um, the importance of, of being anchored in our lives. Looking at how we can uh, be steadfast, uh, surrendering to God's leading uh, and his guiding. If you'd like to just turn back to 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, where we read uh, just then. In 1 Peter chapter 5, picking it up there from uh, verse 7. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be so be, be village, uh, vigilant, because your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle. If let's turn into uh, Hebrews chapter 6, looking at uh, verse 18. It is, it is behind me as well, I believe. Yes. Uh, so, in he- Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, it says there that, that by two imputable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for our refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. So I want to this morning look at that from the angle of the anchor. The main reason a ship has an anchor is to ride out the stormy weather. During a storm, the ship would try and find a harbour, and it would cast its anchor down, um, hunkering down in the ship, so they wouldn't get blown away by the waves, um, and into the rock, ultimately, where um, it could crash. (coughs) But even in calmer weather, even in calmer weather, where things were all good, right, it was still important that the ship had an anchor, because if you left your ship, it would drift in the current. And you know, it's a picture for us, whether in the storms of life, with the winds blowing hard, or, or even in the calm of life, when, when nothing major is happening, you know, things are, things are pretty, pretty mellow, there's nothing serious going on. We still need to have a firm anchor for our souls, or we will drift. 
and we'll get into all sorts of trouble, and trouble that can be avoided. And you know, it's easy to recognise um, the need to be anchored in a storm, you know, because it's, it's obvious there's a massive storm going on, you need to be anchored. But I think what's really important there is, is when life is calm, when things are going smooth, that is also the time that we need to make sure we're anchored. Anchored in the Lord, because we might not realise it, but we can, we can gradually drift. So will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Will you remain steadfast in your faith when the storms hit? Life is not always going to be uh, plain sailing. There's going to be storms. There's going to be some storms, okay? <clears throat> Sometimes bad weather uh, can be forecasted, so we know it's going to happen. You know, we've got the forecast, we know in a couple of days there's a storm coming, so we batten down the hatches, we board up the windows, if it's that severe, that we've had that, but uh, you know, we, we can forecast, we can, we can be prepared. Um, but we don't always know when the storm's coming. Sometimes it just hits you, okay? And you don't know. So <clears throat> that's, the, that's the times we need to make sure we're ready. Okay? We don't have that time to prepare, we need to make sure that we're already prepared in our life. Looking back on your life, what storms have you faced? What storms have you faced? How did you get through? Did you get through on your own? Did you get through with God's help? You know, in those storms, those, those trials that you've been faced with, do you wish you'd handled yourself better? Knowing what you know now, you know, reflecting, looking back, reviewing the situation, what would you do differently next time? I think that's always a, a good thing to do in life when you when you if you've been through something, you know, it's always good to take that time out to, to look at it uh, from a different angle and just, just review that situation. Take take the learnings. Um, we, we mess up, we make we do things wrong, but I think if you can if you can learn from it, then it's been a worthwhile uh, thing to have gone through, I suppose. <clears throat> you know, my life up until um, my early twenties, it seems like it seemed like there's nothing kind of um, out of the ordinary would happen, you know, life is pretty, pretty stock standard, you know, uh, church, school, work, uh, not long married, life is pretty smooth sailing, it's the normal day-to-day -day stuff, um, nothing major had happened in my 23 years, you know, no massive storms in my life, but things happen in the world that, and, and, and you know, you'd hear about things happening on the news, if you watched it, you'd hear about things happening in other places, uh, not here in Christchurch, you'd hear about earthquakes, tsunamis, shootings, tragedies, major events. Um, but upon reflection, the biggest thing to happen, um, the biggest thing that happened to me at that point um, was nothing, nothing that would even compare to some of those, those massive tragedies. But then in late uh, 2010, um, and certainly followed up by then in February 2011, and anyone most of you guys were in Christchurch at that time will, will know that was the earthquakes, right? And the massive earthquake happened in Christchurch. That, that was a massive event. It was a major event. Um, biggest thing that had ever happened in my life at, at that point. Um, and upon reflection, um, that, was, that was huge. That was huge. And uh, there's some real learnings for me to go, to go through what I went through there. Um, we, we lost our family home, uh, never to return again. We never, um, we never spent another night in that home. And, um, and, you know, we have our, our own plans for our life. And I remember telling people, um, when they'd come around to see our place, I was like, oh, yeah, this is our forever home. We're, we're never going to leave here. Um, but then the February quake came in and, and ultimately uh, destroyed it. And, as I said, we never, we never returned. Uh, so we, we were effectively homeless. Uh, we had a, a newborn kid at that time. Uh, we had two dogs and a cat. And we were trying to think about um, what, we, what we would do. We had nowhere to live. Um, and how could we afford to live? Because we were still paying a mortgage for this house that we couldn't live in. Um, it was the unknown, you know, during, during that storm. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Isn't it amazing that, that God cares for us? You know, we have this promise in God's word that, that he'll look after us. 
In Proverbs uh, 3, uh, chapter 5 and uh, chapter five, 3, <laughs> in Proverbs 3, looking at um, verse 5 through to 7, and it's a memory verse for a lot of people, it says, yes, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. How often, you know, we, we race ahead and we try and work out a situation ourselves. We need to seek the Lord, we need to acknowledge Him. And the promise is then that He will direct our paths. Now, did I get that right in that situation where, where I lost my house? Straight after the earthquake. Now, now look, from reflection, no, I didn't straight away. No, I didn't straight away. You know, I tried to figure things out on my own. And if anyone out, and I'm sure we've all done this, if anyone else has done that, you'll understand that what comes with doing that, with what comes with trying to work something out on your own, is, is stress, is anxiety, is worry, all of those things. You know, that can all be avoided if we can just surrender it to the Lord. We have the promise within, within Hebrews 13, verse 5. It says there at the end, I will never leave thee, nor for safety. When life gets tough and, and everybody else leaves, God will be there with you. I'd like to turn to Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy uh, 31 verse 6 there, it says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord, for the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth, uh, that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. We have the promise in God's word that, that he will never leave us. We were blessed to um, end up being able to buy a new home, and it was a newer home, and we were very thankful. But upon reflection, looking back, there were some real takeaway learnings from this for me that the Lord taught me. When you feel all is lost, when you, when you think you don't, can't see a way out, remember that God is always there. He's always in control. He's always watching over us. We can trust Him. And what I've come to realize in my 34 now, 34 years, and still learning, still growing. We talked about that in more than conquerors, you know, we're always still learning and still growing, but I've come to kind of surrender that we don't always understand why things happen in life, and you know, things don't always make sense to us. Um, but we have a knowledge and we have a, we have a hope, and we have a belief that in Romans 8, 28, it says we know that all things work together for good, for them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. We can, we can hold on to that. We can, we can seek refuge in that. We can, we can be grounded in that, in that promise. To remember that he will never leave us. God will never leave us. God will direct our paths and God, God cares for you. How good is that? What else can, who else can offer you that? You know what I mean? There's nothing else out there that, um, that offers that. Is the Lord our anchor in our life? How do we make sure that we're anchored securely? How do we make sure that we're anchored in the Lord? So this morning I want to have a look at uh, three points. It was just my introduction. <laughs> that, that joke never gets old. That one, that one answer wrong. I want to look at three quick points about how we can be uh, anchored, how we can be steadfast. <clears throat> so how can we draw closer to God? God's word should be our instruction 
for our life. But how often we forget to read it, you know? We, well, we read it, but we don't read it like we ought to. <clears throat> Who here has got a new cell phone? I guess everyone has got a new cell phone at some point, right? Did you read all the instructions? Did you read all the instructions before you started mucking around with your cell phone? No. Or did you ask your husband? That one's for Crystal. How do I do this? How do I do that? How often, you know, we, we get something and we just rip it out of the box, plug it in and we start playing with it. We, we try to work it out, we try to figure it out, you know. We ask somebody. We sometimes even jump onto Google to try and figure it out. Um, we sometimes do trial and error. Oh, this worked, this didn't work, you know. But normally the last thing we seem to look at is the instruction manual, right? The instruction manual. Because it's such a big manual, right? It's boring. <laughs> but I tell you what, if you read the instruction manual, you won't have to ask anybody. You'll have, you won't have any trial and error. You'll have... <clears throat> you know, life can be a little bit like that. You know, we try and navigate our way through. We, we try and figure things out on, on our own. Um, but we actually do have the instructions on how to live, how to behave, how to love how to be a good employee, how to, anything, how to be. It's all in the Bible, and how conveniently and accessible we have it. Yet we probably open it up less than people did even 100 years ago. It says in God's Word that we are to not only read it, but to study it. And, and uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 there, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is important that we have an understanding so we don't get blown around. We need to check things out in God's word. Blown around. Now in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You know, there is so much info out there. Um, there's so many preachers on YouTube. Um, there's so many... Christian friends from your different circles of life that you meet along the way. And everyone has their own views, they have their own ideas. But what does God's word say? What does God say? We have the authority, we have God's word. You know, we need to be anchored in God's word. And when we're anchored in God's word, we, we're not going to get blown around. Okay, we're not going to get blown around because we're going to be steadfast. The other way to be anchored in the Lord and being uh, drawn closer to the Lord is through prayer. Now we get anchored deeper in the Lord when we draw closer to Him. And this is achieved by reading His Word, but also spending time in prayer. I don't know about you guys, but it, it amazes me that God wants to hear from little old me. You know, a sinner, little old me, who lets him down all the time and makes mistakes. He, he cares about little old me. And he does for us all. He loves us so much and he cares for us. And David talks about this as he looks up to the night sky in, in Psalms. And, and it says there in, uh, in uh, Psalm 8, 3 to 4, When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moons and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visiteth him. Now God loves us. God loves us. And we have that promise in God's word, for God so loved the world, world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He is our heavenly father. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. We can come directly to Him. 
and we can cast our burdens on Jesus, for He cares. We have the promise there in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. You know, the, the access that we have to God, the promise that we have, He is always there for us. We can be anchored firmer in our faith through reading God's word and praying to Him and praising Him. Supporting others to remain anchored. So you might be anchored. You might have not worked everything out, because I don't think we ever work everything out, but you might be anchored in the Lord. You might be what we would call a strong Christian. Okay? How can you support others to remain anchored? <clears throat> Please don't underestimate your role in someone else's life who might be going through a hard time. Upholding someone in prayer is something we can all do. Let them know. Let them know that you're praying for them. You know, it's never been easier to let someone know that you're praying and that you're thinking for them, uh, of them. For them. Now, we can send a message to anybody around the world and, and they have it in a second. Again, something we take for granted, but letting somebody know that you're praying for them is, is a massive thing. In Romans 12, 15, it talks there about what well, says, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. You know, we join together with our friends to mourn, uh, to, to support them when things don't go well. Supporting them through the death of a loved one, loss of a job, an injury, a trial, and so on. And we can uphold each other. I, I remember back to when we were in Auckland with uh, Lockie being born. And uh, we were up there for, for some time and he was awaiting having his heart surgery as a baby, and, and uh, it was a hard time. And what I remember is, is people sending text messages, text messages of support, of support, you know, and, and reminders that, that folk were praying for us. And it, it didn't have to be anything fancy, a couple of lines, whatever, it didn't matter. It was the fact that you, you get a quick message from someone, and, and it was a real blessing. People would send us uh, Bible verses. Promises through God's word, um, hymn lyrics to encourage us. You know, it would drip through um, during that time that we were there. And often it was coming to us um, at a time when we really needed it. And, and uh, it was a blessing. And, and you know, we can, we can encourage each other like that. So just remember that. Remember how important that, that, that might be to somebody. You might, might not think it's a big deal, saying a mentioning somebody in your prayer, um, but letting them know that it might be something massive. In Hebrews chapter 10, it talks about um, encouraging others to strive ahead. It says there in, in uh, Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Provoking one another. Encouraging one another. Supporting one another. You know, the world can get in the way of our love for Jesus. You know, we can, we can lose sight of perhaps the place that he should have in our life. And I, I just remember back um, when I was a young Christian, and I guess I was a little bit um, off the rails uh, at one point, and... Um, I wasn't too regular at my uh, local church. And I remember a mate from my youth group who had noticed I wasn't always at church. He rung me up um, one Sunday morning. He said, Shane, as I'm all groggy waking up, I'll be around in 10 minutes to pick you up for church. Now, I'd been out reasonably late, probably the night before at a friend's house or whatever, mucking around. I didn't even have time to, to think, didn't even have really time to respond to him. But I knew it was coming, and I knew he was going to be picking me up. So I quickly freshened myself up, and uh, he picked me up, and we were off to church. That was actually a real blessing to me. 
and it was an encouragement. It, it was something that he did in love. There's a right and wrong way to do it, but yeah, he did it in love. And it was where I needed to be. I needed to be in church. And sometimes we need a bit of an encouraging you know, smack around the ear. You know, we, we, we need a bit of encouragement from each other. And that's what we can do for each other when we have that, uh, that relationship with each other. That's, that's what we can do. In Philippians uh, 4, verse 6 through to 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And this is the cool part of the verse of that I think is just awesome. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. God says we can have peace, we can, we can leave it with Him. Now this peace that He go, gives to us, it, it doesn't make sense to us. It doesn't make sense. But God, that's what God can do. God can give us that peace that passeth all understanding. And what a blessing that God gives that to us. We can leave our requests with Him. Point, point number three is to be anchored in the Lord. We need to keep our eyes on the Lord. What is your purpose in life? Where are you heading? What's on your sights? Now, during the More Than Conquerors camp, we did a bit of target shooting. Do you guys remember doing that? Not that long ago. Um, and you look down the scope of the uh, rifle, right? And you're trying to find your target. And when you found your target, could you see anyone else? Did you see anyone else around you? Could you see the cars? Could you see the barbecue? Could you see the river? Maybe the river. All you could do was see your target, right? We need to keep focused on the Lord. We need to have our eyes on the target to remain anchored in Him. You know, drama, curveballs, 2020, awful stuff is going to come across our paths. It's not if, it's not maybe, it's, it, it will, it will happen for all of us. And perhaps it has, perhaps it is right now, perhaps it's going to. You know, we need to prepare, we need to be uh, in the best position that we can for when trouble comes our way. Remembering that the Lord will never leave us, will never leave us. In Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. We have the promise there in God's word that you can seek the Lord and you will find him if you're seeking him with all your heart. <clears throat> like an anchor, we need to be steadfast so we can't be moved. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. So in conclusion, that means I'm nearly at the end. In summary, will your anchor hold? When you think of an anchor, you usually picture the heavy object uh, that's attached to the ship, that's going to secure it at the bottom of the sea. 
An anchor provides a firm foundation that provides security. Hebrews, Hebrews 6 tells us that it is our hope that is the anchor for our soul. We don't always get sunny days. Bad weather and extremes such as storms, as I said, are going to happen. In your life, uh, it might be tomorrow, might be next year, maybe, maybe it's happened, maybe, maybe it's in the future, maybe it's whatever. But curveballs are going to be thrown our way, storms are going to come. Very, very likely. Being prepared is certainly the key, being grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love is important. As we close uh, this morning, we're going to sing We Have an Anchor. Lizzie's agreed to play it, thank you. And as we look at those words, just reflect and, and be, be thinking about are we anchored in the Lord? And what, what does that mean? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. I will just close in a word of prayer. Lord, I do thank you for this morning. Lord, I do thank you for your word. I thank you for the promises that we have in your word, Lord. I thank you for the accessibility, Lord, that we have to access your word, that we, we have it so readily available. Lord, help us to, to treasure it. Lord, help us to really dive into it. Lord, that you can speak through your word to us, Lord, that we can... We can have, Lord, that peace that passes all understanding in, in every situation that we face. Lord, knowing that you're in control. Knowing that we don't have to do it on our own. We don't have to be stressed, worried, or anxious. Lord, that we can cast our cares upon you. Lord, we thank you for that promise. Thank you that you loved us so much that, that you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. Lord, that you made that way for us. For us, little old men. Lord, that you cared. We thank you so much for that. Lord, I just pray as we uh, go about from here, for a week, months, years ahead, Lord, we just pray that we would continue to prepare, Lord, that we would continue to grow in you, that we would be anchored, deeper, grounded, Lord, in you. Thank you once again for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to, to be here. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.